It's midday. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the news here on 3FM 92.7. We're coming to you live from our studio at Adesawe Kanda here in Accra, also live on our numerous affiliates across the country, around the world. We're streaming live on 3news.com. Download the tuning app from the Google Play or Apple iOS Store and listen to us on the go. Coming up this afternoon, all 10 aspirants to face special delegates of the governing new patriotic party come, election, uh, come August 26th as vetting committee approves all of them in their bid to lead the ruling party break the eight also in the bulletin calls for a special probe to be conducted into leaked audio tape detailing a plot to ask the igp dr george kufu dampare intensifies despite the interior minister ambrose derry's attempts to downplay the issue and much later ghana armed forces launches operations along border communities in upper east to repatriate suspected terrorists disguised as refugees we have details of these stories and a lot more if you stay with us for the next 30 minutes A pleasure that you could be a part of this afternoon's bulletin. It's streaming live on Facebook. Our handles 3FM927. Same handles on Twitter as well, 3FM927. And there's some news as well in relation to the We Bill. That's what a lot of you call it by the Narcotics Control Act, which amendment which is currently before parliament will get details and take you live to the legislature including the latest details of an increase in producer price inflation we'll get all of that when the business team joins us uh, a lot later but let's begin from the front of politics because the governor new patriotic party will for the first time in its history hold a superdelegate conference to slash down on the numbers of persons seeking to lead the party into the next general elections it follows the approval of all 10 aspirants by the vetting committee of the party a statement uh, issued by the secretary of the party confirmed the approval of all 10 aspirants with a special delegate conference scheduled for august 26. there's more in the news desk report and so the cat has been let out of the bag. All 10 aspirants of the governing new patriotic party will head to the August 26th Superdelegate Conference where some 900 individuals are expected to whittle down the numbers to five. It will be the first time since 2007 where as many as 17 individuals put themselves up wanting to lead the NPP as well during the 2008 general elections and elections they eventually lost. According to a statement as issued by the general secretary of the party, all 10 have made it through and now the honors lies greatly with the 900 delegates who are expected come August 26th to vote and decide the five who head to November 4 where the entirety of all delegates will be expected to vote to elect a flag bearer to break the proverbial eight but who are the 10 candidates well according to polls and the opinions of political watchers former trade minister alan kujo Ting, vice president dr Mohamedou baumia and a sin central mp kennedy of japan appear the clear front runners ahead of both the August 26th Superdelegate Conference and the primaries come November 4th. The others include Dr. Uswe Friyakoto, Boache Jaku, Kwabne Japong, Dr. Kofi Kunedwa Preku, Joe Gatti, Francis Adainimo, and Ernest Kojopoku. Per the statement as issued by the General Secretary of the Party, Justin Frimpong Kodia, the National Council of the Party is much later this month, July 20th, expected to deliberate on the recommendation of the vetting committee.
So that's a news desk report. Uh, we've been mentioning to you all the while that the Vetting Committee concluded uh, the processes last week. They submitted the report on Monday. The expectation uh, was that that could have been made public uh, a lot earlier. Well, today, that statement from the General Secretary of the party has disclosed that no individuals were disqualified and that all of them have been allowed to go face the super delegates uh, come August 26th, from which the numbers are expected to be whittled down to five. And that news text uh, pretty much sums it all up. We're going on the telephone lines uh, just shortly to uh, connect with the political analyst as to exactly what it is that uh, we're seeing and the reason behind the decision uh, by the party and get a bit more for you here on the news on 3FM 92.7. But also one of the candidates as well, the former deputy, the former general secretary, I should say, Kwame Japon, he launched his campaign as well yesterday where he, amongst many things, appeared to be taking on the establishment and making the case quite strongly that the delegates should not vote in persons responsible for the current state of the country. And so that is a position as well that we'll be seeking to get a bit more details on here on the news on 3FM 92.7. But while we wait to connect with a lot of the political analysts, we can do uh, some bit more here on the news. And there are growing calls for a probe to be conducted into the leaked audio tape containing an alleged plot to remove the Inspector General of Police and by extension subvert the country's democracy. The said audio is alleged to contain the voices of high-ranking police officers and a leading member of the governing New Patriotic Party discussing the concern that the IGP, Dr. George Kufu Dampare, could frustrate efforts to manipulate the outcome of the 2024 elections, hence the need to oust him. However, commenting on the matter in an interview, Minister for Interior Ambrose Derry dismissed the issue, urging the public to disregard it. There is no plot. To remove anybody. I don't know about him. Well, I said my president and I do what is policy to bring the development of this country. I'm not sure I want to uh, get involved in investigation thing, except that they relate to crime. Then we will do that. But I think that so far, I think we are doing well. We will agree we are doing well. Right? So I can assure you that I serve a president who is committed and has respect for human rights. And we will make sure 2024 is peaceful. And for those theories about, you know, you can, we, we, we can imagine things. We have rich imaginations to go on. One thing is certain, 2024 would not be a violent election by anybody and no one will want to thwart the will of the people. If you vote as in, you vote as in. If you vote outside, you vote out. And we've shown that before. So that's the Interior Minister Ambrose Derry. Well, there are those who are making the calls for investigations into the development. Security analyst Adam Bona is one of such individuals. He spoke to Roland Walker a while earlier on TV3's New Day. Some of us will call for a pro. Uh, uh, Roland, if you listen to the entire thing, you'll crunch. If you listen to the entire thing and you watch some of the videos, you'll crunch. Mine is that what what is out there is just the tip of the iceberg what is is not out there is a matter of national security concern and i'm sure anyone who has in his custody what has not gone out there should continue to keep it so that if there is supposed to be any inquiry it can be done in closed doors that aspect can be done in closed doors because a lot of the things they said mm -hmm. very 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 you know reprehensible very very injurious it comes out with injurious to this country. And I don't want us to connect this thing directly to politics because mm. these are professionals who have been trained, some of them over 30 years in service. And so uh, the moment we begin to, you know, add politics to it, it diffuses it, it makes it lose its potency. Let's deal with it professionally. Okay. These so, are professionals so, ganging up to, uh, uh, unethically on seat another professional. 
Adam Bona is a security analyst, Dr. Adam Bona, speaking to us this afternoon. Emmanuel Kote is another of such security analysts. Let's make his thoughts uh, on this. Uh, uh, Mr. Kote, many thanks for speaking to us. And so the position of government has been one of a dismissal, essentially stating or telling the citizenry that pay no heed uh, to that audio recording. Considering that we've seen other audio recordings uh, treated a lot seriously. Should it be the case that we dismiss what it is that we've heard in that 50 minutes audio recording? Well, thank you for having me and very good afternoon to your cherished listeners. I think the position of government is very, very unfortunate because if you look at the content of the audio, any progressive society should be interested in investigating such an audio, especially given the times we live in. You know, it's public knowledge that the public perception of politicians or government hold on our security service is impeding our security operations. So to the extent that a senior police officer is having a conversation with a political operative. This cannot be less than a treasonable act. So, so for the Minister of Interior to simply wish that away and, and say that he doesn't impugn any criminality in such an audio is very unfortunate. Let's be frank, right? It doesn't lie with the interior minister to say whether he's satisfied with the work of the IGP or otherwise. He's not the appointing authority. His job is equally subject, uh, is subjected to appointment. So let's be serious in this country. Our democracy has come far. Let's uh, 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 develop our democratic institutions. We can nearly reduce our democracy to going to elections every four years and use money on our gullible youth and uh, 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 poverty ridden citizens to win power, and we say we are practicing democracy. For Christ's sake, I have two thoughts here. And all those two school of thought falls under one umbrella. The emergence of artificial intelligence. Mm. And people are making a lot of arguments around artificial intelligence that people could do that just to end a political score, things like that. All of those things are true. The first school of thought I believe in so much is that some government officials were not happy over the outcome of the scene of elections. And there were conversations and and some were casting aspirations on the integrity of the IGP and his removal. Mm. It could be true that such a conversation happened. On the other hand, it could also be true that uh, the IGP and his team, after uh, having realized that his job is at stake, could use artificial intelligence to create such an audio to call the appointing authority from getting rid of him. So all of this school of thoughts, how did we come to the conclusion? It must be investigated. Right. And this is something we must do. And it, it, and it brings another layer. Who is to investigate that? This is a senior police officer involved. How can the police investigate itself? That is why some of us have advocated for the establishment of an independent police commission. This would have fallen under the ambit of such a commission and, you know, we'll be more or less uh, uh, developing our democratic institutions. So as we are now, we are in a limbo. Probably the interior minister feels that there's no any credible institution that can investigate him. So as a result, he's wishing it away just like we do. Mm, so we no, must begin to take the people of this country seriously. Mm. 
the bit you make, the point you make about no credible institution being able to investigate this is one of the issues uh, that is coming up. Who can be taxed to look into the matter? Because already some individuals are making the claim that persons should be interdicted within uh, the, the service because what we heard was an audio recording, but it actually is a video which captures uh, these said individuals. And so if it is the case that we do not know who should be investigating in this then uh, it appears that nothing will be done in this regard look i'm a democrat those calling for interdiction is premature investigations must be carried out and the premier phase case established before such actions can be taken mm. when we come to the institutions i dare say that there's not really credible institution as we are as a country to handle such a case, given the magnitude of it, except parliament. And when it gets to parliament, it becomes a political uh, panther, which at the end of the day will not inure to the benefit of the good people of right. the country. Right. So we need to begin to listen to the cause when we are calling from, for democratic institutions that can handle issues of this nature. Mm. So I think Parliament should be looking at the uh, uh, ways and means they can pass a legislation. Right. Then we can have an independent police commission and issues like that can properly be dealt with. Mm. And the image of Ghana in the international community will be respected. So as it stands now, it's very unfortunate there's any, any better institution place to do such an investigation apart from Parliament. Mr. Kutin, I appreciate that you could speak to us. That's Emmanuel Kutin, a security analyst, also sharing his thoughts. We're moving away from this, but staying on security matters because the Ghana Armed Forces has launched an operation along the country's borders to repatriate suspected terrorists disguised as refugees. It is believed some terrorists and their associates have entered uh, some border communities around Paga in the Upper East region disguised as refugees. Christopher Marco is a man as uh, superintendent over the north. He joins us uh, with a bit more more details. Chris, what more do we know about this exercise by the military? Yes, so uh, the military actually uh, picked up some persons suspected to uh, be uh, working for the jihadist group and the intention is that they are to uh, repatriate them. But uh, aside that, you remember that some time ago some refugees entered the country through the Sapelga area in the uh, uh, Katana and Kana West uh, district of the Upper East region. For those ones, uh, those who fail to register uh, themselves as refugees are some of them are amongst those who will be uh, repatriated and they are also changing their location because according to authorities there the Sapelga area there is so close to neighboring Burkina Faso so they are bringing them upward so that they will be able to monitor uh, their activities very well but those uh, who have come in without any registration and without any basis are those that are to be repatriated Right then, and Chris will be monitoring that for us and we'll get a bit more by the Deputy uh, Defence Minister, Kofi Amankwamenu. He's been providing a bit more explanation as to the reasoning uh, behind this repatriation. Let's just take a listen to him. So what is actually happening is that uh, neighboring countries, Burkina, uh, Burkina Faso, Togo, and then Cote d'Ivoire are conducting uh, some security operations, you know, to deal with the issue of... Um, Terrorism grouping. And so most people are sitting together in Ghana. So we have a lot of people coming into Ghana. And uh, our intelligence is that some of these armed groupings, you know, uh, terrorist uh, armed persons have disguised themselves into headsmen, into illegal immigrants, and all that. You so that's the Deputy Defence Minister Kofi Amankwa Meno hoping, now we we're hoping to get him on the telephone lines to get a bit more from him as to exactly what it is uh, that is currently being undertaken on the floor of uh, at the northern part of the country. But I will 
connect with him shortly and get a bit more details. You're listening to the news here on 3FM 92.7. We're streaming live on Facebook as well. Our handles 3FM 927. The Deputy Defence Minister, Kofi Aman Kwamenu, he's joining us uh, on the telephone lines now with a bit more details as to exactly uh, what is happening at the border town in the Upper East region. We'll move on and bring uh, his thoughts to you as and when it does come through. We're taking you to the floor of uh, Parliament now because the minority there say that they will seek guidance from the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Sumana Bagbin, to subpoena the central bank boss over his refusal to attend to the Finance Committee invitations on its workings. Ranking member on the Finance Committee, Isaac Adungu, has been speaking uh, to the media in relation to this particular matter. And we'll hear from Isaac Adungo pretty shortly. And the publication of the Bank of Ghana's own financial statements, which by law should have been published by the end of April of the year. We are now half a year through the year, and all the banks have complied with the filing of their returns to the Bank of Ghana. Those reports include what we call the long form. Uh, a report, which are very detailed, audited reports of the banks, breaking down every single item on the balance sheet of the banks in order that we can see the bank for who it is. But Bank of Ghana is not able to comply with its own law to do the very things that the other banks are doing. The bank has not filed and published its financial statements. Every 15 days, the Bank of Ghana is supposed to gazette its assets and liabilities. And at the end of the month, they are supposed to further file its assets and liabilities. It's been almost six months now, the Bank of Ghana is in clear violations of these provisions. I want to serve warning to the governor of the central bank, Dr. Addison, that he should remember that he had dragged people to the court over the violations of the Bank of Ghana Act. As a matter of fact, one of them just died whilst in court, and that he should know that the same level of accountability will be extended to him. But he has a decision to make whether to cut his losses and comply with the law, or to continue with these violations of the Bank of Ghana Act, and that the long arm of the law is waiting for him. So that's Isaac Adongo. He's a ranking member on the Finance Committee of Parliament speaking to the Parliamentary Press Corps. Parliamentary Affairs Correspondent Kumla Kluchi has joined us on the telephone line with a bit more uh, on this and other matters on the floor. And so, um, Kumla, is it the case that we should be expecting the subpoena anytime soon? Well, there was no timeline given. There was to say that Adongo wants it to be done because when 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 he, he he asked his lawyers to write to the central bank on the publishing of uh, their reports uh, every 15 days uh, he, he for about six months he wasn't doing it and after that he, he decided to be doing it and then he he he's now decided not to appear before the finance committee and he finds that as quite offensive and so he's going to take these steps as a ranking member and also as a committee they would take these steps to ensure that the central bank boss would appear before them or else i mean he's going to be risking uh some some sanctions of the sort that that he he makes it so he didn't give any clear timeline as to when he's going to do it Mm. On to other matters now, though. We know that yesterday the expectation uh, was that the uh, narcotics bill could have been considered. It was being considered under a certificate of urgency and eventually passed. That was not successful. Just walk us through the proceedings yesterday and what the expectation is for today. Well, it's well, expected that the speaker will put a question and... Uh, uh, the House would approve it. I mean, uh, I have seen loads of people who have come and are seated at the public gallery, especially um, the Rastafari community. They, they are here. That clearly tells you that they have a lot of interest in this as well. Both the minority and the majority are also here in their numbers. So uh, it is expected. Sitting just started just about, um, uh, about some 10 
10 to 15 minutes ago. And so it's expected that um, this this will be done and then the, the speaker will put a question and then that will be the end. Beyond this though, are there any other individuals expected on the floor? No, not 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 that we are aware of now. But the the speaker just gave the indication that the attorney general has written to him again, renominating Cynthia Lampe as the deputy special prosecutor. Uh, remember, she was nominated and vetted by the house for a contract period of five years. That is, and that she's been renominated. She's been renominated again, and that has been referred to the appointment committee. And so. If this, hap if this happens, it, it, it means that she will need to be vetted again. But as the speaker has referred it to the appointment committee, we are not too sure when uh, the vetting is going to be done. We, we had indications that it will be done today, but um, there is no sign of it as we speak. Right then, Kamala Kluch is a parliamentary affairs correspondent. Just on that narcotics control amendment bill, let's hear uh, from the majority leader of SHMN Sabunsu and the uh, uh, vice chair of the Defence and Interior Committee of Parliament, Ophelia Mensa, when they made arguments uh, for the bill to be passed under a certificate of urgency. The demands of cannabis product surges worldwide, and states look to diversify their income stream streams, Ghana could do the same by regulating the economic use of the plant. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, the committee, having carefully listened or having carefully deliberated on the issues, came to the conclusion that the bill should be treated under the certificate of agency. This ruling should suggest to us that we need to engage our compatriots on the bench so that they, they come to appreciate the nuances of what we do in the House. Which is why I'm happy that after the referral, the committee has come to this conclusion that we need to pass this amendment bill through a certificate of agency. The Speaker, the import of the certificate of agency is just to avoid the gazette period of 14 days. In the circumstances, I will not be able to put the question. Uh, what I can do is to defer the question uh, on the second reading, and that could be done tomorrow. Uh, I think that table office <clears throat> should reach the, this, um, the second reading for tomorrow, where the question will be put. As a Speaker of Parliament from yesterday, and we do know now that that table, uh, that question rather, uh, will be put today with the expectation that the Narcotics Control Amendment Bill 2023 would be passed. But just by way of information, again, Kamala Kucha, Parliamentary Affairs Correspondent, you mentioned that the Attorney General has written to the Speaker of Parliament renominating the Deputy uh, Special Prosecutor Cynthia Lamte. The Speaker has referred that to the appointment committee and so it will be one to look out for in the coming days and you're listening to the news here on 3FM 92.7 and there's been news as well from the Food and Drugs Authority which has uh, suspended the sale of three water brands on the Ghanaian market. They've issued a statement. I'll just walk um, listeners through it and the Food and Drugs Authority. They've suspended the activities of Samdo uh, Enterprise, a water producing company located at Community 18 Spintex Road. And the reasons uh, that the, the water was being produced under unregistered brands in an unlicensed and hygienic manufacturing facility. Also, the authorities' inspection team uh, found Perfect Eyes drinking water, Aqua Link drinking water, and Leaders drinking water all uh, being produced by Samdo Enterprise. And the authorities' inspection team uncovered major safety and quality issues, including operation in an unsuitable wooden structure, presence of open drains with algae and fungi growth, dirty filters, and no pest control regime. The public is therefore cautioned not to consume the unregistered brands listed above and consumers uh, who have 
already purchased these products are urged to immediately halt their use and properly dispose of them immediately retailers and distributors are also requested to withdraw all of these brands from the market and so uh, those are just details from the food and drugs authority in relation to uh, water that is on the Ghanaian market i mentioned uh Inflation going up marginally. The business team, they'll join us uh, with the business daily pretty shortly with a bit more details as to exactly what's in there. But just by way of brief details, uh, that in the month of June 2023, the general price level was 42.5% higher than June 2022. And Anikia Brampamensa, she's joined us in studio. Just brief details before she sinks her teeth further into it. Okay, are inflation up marginally? Yeah, so we're looking at some 0.2 percentage points there. I, I heard you mentioning the figures from 42.2 uh, to 42.5%. But when you when you look at the breakdown, it looks like uh, food inflation has seen some consistent increase of about 20 percentage points difference compared to the non-food inflation. And this is what the government's decision has raised red flag. He actually wants policymakers to pay some critical attention to the factors that are contributing to the increase of food inflation. You know that it is our major uh, uh, point as a country when we talk about food inflation compared to non-food. Also, we have imported goods also going up in terms of inflation compared to that of the locally produced. So this and more, we'll be looking at this and more uh, in the next few seconds, if I should say, on the on Business Daily. Right then, that's Nane Kiamensa Brampa. She comes up next with the very latest from the world of business. I am Eric Mawinagbeta. A lot more news on 3news.com.